Okay, I got the laminator all put back together. Um, actually, I haven't screwed it in or anything, but um, just to test out a sheet. Looks like we have success here. Gloria can't be stopped with walls. The rhythm is going to get you. Making stickers out of this design that I made from the album cover that I showed in the first part of this video. I think they came out pretty well. These are printed on a laser jet. They're not meant to be super high quality. Uh, I'm going to give them out for free. So don't want to spend a lot of money. See, so yeah, when you put on the three mil setting, it's only going to go up to about 270. And on the five mil, it'll go to a higher setting. You get the two beeps and the green light when it thinks it's at full temperature. Or um, basically how it thinks it's full temperature is the NTC thermistor gives a zero ohm reading or something similar. So um, just going to show if I can, it's going to be pretty hot in here right now. Oof, I can actually smell it. Smell the laminate material. But if we look in here, the issue was just an incorrectly installed NTC thermistor, which is really interesting. Um, it was not a super difficult fix, but finding out that that was the problem uh, took a little bit of time. But I learned a lot along the way. Now you see that motherboard there, that was... Um, see if I can zoom in here. This camera is not that great. I do apologize. Um, that version 1.1 NTC PCB is supposed to be facing up. And that was actually facing down when I got this off of eBay. So who knows what happened there. Um, do apologize for the shaky camera. You can see the thermistor there. What's interesting is that this does not actually touch the thermistor. It comes really close to it though, but it actually rests uh, if I can get it down in there, it actually rests on the PCB um, on the substrate, which is kind of interesting. Oh, sorry, this is, hope you're not getting nauseous with this. Just trying to get this in here so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. And you see there, it's resting at the edge of the PCB. Now, those two pieces of metal to the left and right of the thermistor, if those are touching, of course, it'll always think that it's hot enough and you won't get the beep. And that's what happened when I originally got this unit. That was a dead short. Uh, the thermistor starts out at 100K and when it's getting hot, it gets closer and closer to zero. I'm gonna zoom out now. Um, those are the rollers, of course. And everything else appears to be working. Just to give you an idea of, of uh, what I'm talking about, um, I've got a meter here and I've got a meter, uh, I've got a meter for set to ohms, set to resistance right there. And then I've got a meter set to uh, temperature. So what I'm going to do is just give you a little example of how you can test a thermistor in one of these. Put your, uh, put one lead in there, the other lead. So you got your both, uh, Got your thermistor resistance, and as you can see here, it's 19 kilo ohms. And it's climbing, if you can see that, it's climbing as the heating element gets cooler with room temperature. That's what it should be doing. That's really good. That indicates a good thermistor. And I'm going to be careful to make sure these wires aren't resting on this really hot heating element here. And now I'm going to take my temperature probe. This is a newer meter, so it's got a light. Yay! My friend got that for me for my birthday. Very nice of him. And uh, what I'm going to do is put this probe, I'm going to place it on the heating element, and you'll see as it climbs, it's not an instantaneous readout. And there is sort of a ratio between the resistance and the temperature. That's what a thermistor is. It changes with temperature. And you can see it's at 207. Now let's turn this on. Let's turn it on to the uh, three mil setting. It actually helps if we plug it in first. So we got our red light and it's getting ready. Now this is what's interesting is the minute I turn it on, it starts to drop to uh, 27.6 ohms, something around that. It's kind of strange. I actually think that's because of the resistance of the microcontroller 
interfering with the resistance of the thermistor. So it's reading it. It's just that we're not going to get the same reading the microcontroller is because of the I.O. pin resistance. Maybe there's a pull up or a pull down. Not sure exactly. You can tell it's pulsing. Um, so I'm not sure what that's all about. But again, that's that's going to be related to the microcontroller. I wish I knew exactly what it was doing. I could put my scope on it and see more detail, but honestly, I've spent enough time working on this thing, and it's working. I'm just doing this for educational purposes. So my probe's still on it. You see it's climbing to 150, 152. Uh, my guess is around 280, 270, 280. I should get that beep. really depends on how accurate the microcontroller is measuring as well. Um, I'm also going to be interested to know what the readout of the thermistor is going to be at full. So we're at 270 now. And you'll see the motor is always going. Always going when it's on. I guess that's fine. It seems a little strange to me. I guess if you had a fancier version, you'd have some sort of uh, some sort of opto coupler or photo photo transistor detecting when the page is inserted. Either that, or maybe it's going all the time because the rollers need to uh, rotate the heat as much as possible. That would make sense. But you know, this is a quick and dirty thing. It's not meant to be super fancy especially for whatever it sells for. Now you see it's already at 300. That's interesting. When the case was on though, it would beep for sure and indicate that it was finished. So it could be now that my uh, my meters... Oh, no, there we go. Got the double beep and we're going to have the green light. All right, so this goes to 306. Interesting. 305, 306 thereabouts. And you'll see that the resistance is not actually drastically changed. So that's because of the meter, uh, the, the logic of the microcontroller is interfering with it. Let's see what happens when we remove power. When we remove power, it bumps up to 12K. Okay, so we know that it's it's at 12K, because I just you know removed power right now. It's not going to change that quickly to room temperature. So the microcontroller resistance is definitely interfering with uh, the thermistor resistance. I mean, interfering in the sense of our reading, not in the design of it. So there you go, folks. It's going to be climbing now. Um, temperature probe is not attached, but if I attach the temperature probe, uh, I'm just attaching it to the frame. I, I imagine the rollers maybe are a little bit hotter than this. Um, we'll see. Um, it's still over three, falling under 300 now. And you'll see this rises 12K up and up and up and up. Seems to be working pretty well pretty well. Um, I almost wonder if I moved that thermistor to be a little bit closer, if it would trigger at 270 degrees instead of 300. 300 I think might be a little bit too hot. Um, I had read online that 270 is the ideal temperature, but it's hard to say too, and it depends on what you're doing. I think for what I'm doing, because um, you'll get this kind of waviness in the in the laminate, supposedly, if you uh, if you have it too hot. Again, I'm new to this. So um, I may not know exactly, but um, for what I'm doing for these small stickers, um, I think it's eh, it's a little bit wavy. I think it's all right though. I can tweak it a little bit. So if you want to tweak yours, all you have to do is, um, you know, you can move the the thermistor to pro closer proximity. You can use some uh, some thermal compound like this stuff to, uh, you know, make the heat detection a little bit more accurate. But what I'm concerned about is whether or not the microcontroller is taking into account um, if it's using the thermistor simply to detect like close proximity to the heating element. Like if it knows if it's designed around um, just the air. Because um, as you can see, as I showed before, it isn't actually touching it, touching the heating element here. It's really close but it is not actually touching it. So like I would wonder if the microcontroller is programmed to take that into account or not. Hard to say. Um, hard to say if it was touching it, if it would actually break. Though I guess not. I guess the uh, microcontroller would just shut it off sooner. So there are some things to try. 
I guess I'm going to have to just uh, laminate some stuff and see what happens. But I'm pretty happy. I mean, this is a fairly working unit. It seems to be doing the job. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll report back or anything like that. I think you get the gist of it. Hopefully, this video has been helpful. And hopefully, you were all going to go check out some Gloria Estefan. Cause she rules. She's actually highly... I'm very, very impressed with her in the Miami Sound Machine. Uh, learning more about them today in between working on this. And uh, now I've moved on to uh, some Led Zeppelin. Always a good time. And, uh, yeah, music and uh, modding. Always a good way to go. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.